Hello, my name is Andy Durrant from Race Technology. This video is an introduction to the Dash 2 Pro and in particular some of the features in the configuration software which is shipped with it. So the Dash 2 Pro is a very powerful unit, it's very flexible and it can be set up for all sorts of different applications. We ship it with a, uh, the default configuration which suits many applications, particularly race applications. But uh, quite often you want to connect your own sensors or have a different uh, ECU connected to it and so on. So there's all sorts of reasons why you will need to set it up for your particular application. So I'm going to go through the software. It's not intended as a full tutorial about how to set the unit up, but rather I just want to introduce some of the features in the software to give you an idea of what the unit is capable of. Okay, so I've uh, started the software up. This is the, the software that ships. It's available for download from the website. So I should say down, down the left hand side uh, we, we have the um, input system, so we have analog inputs, CAN inputs, the ECU and so on. Uh, and on the right hand side we have the system outputs if you like. So um, we have how the data is logged and output drivers, lap timing. And in the middle here, in the middle section, we have all the things that relate to how the display itself is set up, how the information is presented. So okay, so if we look at the analog inputs to start with, so I'll select that box. So on the Dash 2 Pro, there's uh, four analog inputs as standard, and then you can upgrade that to eight analog inputs if you require. Analog sensors are things like pressure sensors, temperature sensors, maybe suspension sensors, so things that output a voltage. So on the, on the Dash 2 Pro, we have the ability to take data from analog sensors, and digital sensors, so um, for example from an ECU or CAN data. Um, so an example of an analog sensor would be the fuel level sensor in the fuel tank. So um, broadly two options with the, um, with the analog sensors. You can either buy sensors from race technology or you can use sensors which are already fitted to the engine. If they're fitted to the engine, normally makes sense to use them. Uh, the only difficulty there is you do then have to set the software up so it knows how to convert that voltage into a real value. So for example, it reads in a voltage from the temperature sensor, but then you have to tell the Dash 2 Pro how to convert that voltage into an actual temperature. So there's a bit of work involved there. Um, as the, the alternative is that you buy a sensor from Race Technology. In that case, it's very straightforward because you can just pick the sensor from a drop-down list, which I'll show you. Um, but the difficulty is then obviously you have to fit our sensor onto your engine. Sometimes that's very straightforward, um, particularly if it's a modern engine, um, but sometimes it's difficult to get the correct threads and, um, and therefore there's some mechanical difficulties in fitting, fitting those sensors. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we, uh, if we look at the, um, the analog input section here, um, in this case, we can specify a standard uh, race technology sensor. So we can select from a uh, NTC sensor, so that's a standard Bosch temperature sensor for things like oil temperature or water temperature, or thermocouple amplifier. Or um, if we're using uh, a sensor which is already on the engine, then we can go to custom, that up, and we can uh, generate a curve from the characteristics of the sensor. So I'll just do a little made up example. So if at one volt, that is uh, 30 degrees, at two volts, it's 40 degrees, at four volts, it's 55 degrees, and at five volts, it's 65 degrees. So okay, I just made up an example. Um, it calculates a curve for you, and then we just say OK, and it's put that equation into the software. So that's an example, I just made the values up. In reality, what you'd have to do is to measure the voltage and normally um, have the, the sensor in, a, in some boiling water and some freezing water and so on. So it takes considerably longer as a, as a real example. OK, so um, yeah, that's the analog input screen, so move on to the next. So we can also take data from a CAN data source. CAN data source is by far the most common is an ECU, but also on some racing cars you have a power control unit which can output CAN data. 
maybe even some CAN based sensors on the cars. So the Dash 2 Pro is very flexible, it can take CAN data from anywhere, you can set different bit rates and so on, uh, and different conversions. Mostly users don't get involved in setting up individual channels for CAN data. Mostly you'll get the CAN definition file, file from us and it will be pre-configured. Um, you can set it up yourself or for industrial customers or for customers that have contact with the manufacturer of the car. Um, quite often they supply a so-called DBC file, a, da a, a CAN database file. And in that case you can import it directly and you can set up the channels yourself. The other thing to say about that is um, this is a licensed option and for every CAN license you buy you can, can convert up to 15 different CAN channels. So okay, moving on. The next one is ECU interface. So this is one of the very common and very popular options for the Dash 2 Pro. So in this case you just have a lead that runs from the Dash 2 Pro, plugs into your ECU and it pulls all the data through for you. So the Dash 2 Pro is capable of converting data from many third party ECUs. So if we just pick one, so we pick the Emerald ECU for example, um, that then displays all the channels of data which is available from that ECU and we just we just enable them. So very straightforward and if you are running a third, third party ECU that's probably the way to go. It, it makes for a very neat electrical installation because it's just one cable and it makes the configuration more straightforward as well. So we say OK to that. Software is just giving you some warnings there about changing the ECU type. So the next one to look at is the wheel speed and RPM. So if you look at the options available here um, we have the opportunity to set up the number of pulses per wheel revolution and also we can set up the RPM. Um, it is possible to get RPM from the ECU um, but quite often it's nice to have a direct connection just because we get faster updates. Now because we're updating the shift lights with the RPM it's really important they have very very fast response and the data from the ECU it can have a delay on maybe a tenth of a second, maybe a few tenths of a second but it means the shift lights are always lagging behind the actual RPM. If we have a direct feed from the engine, it makes, makes sure they update really quickly. And it's normally quite straightforward to wire up a direct RPM feed. Most commonly we take it from a fuel injector. Next one down is uh, set up the internal accelerometers. This is just the filtering on the accelerometers. Unless there's very high vibration levels in the car, there's not normally any need to, uh, to do anything with these options. Uh, there's also um, the control input options. Again, it's very rare that these are changed from the default settings. Simply this, uh, well, when you install the Dash 2 Pro, you normally have four buttons. You have up, down, menu, and set. Um, you can change the default actions to those buttons, and you can also add on some extra buttons via the analog channels. It's not normally necessary, but the options are, are there for you if you wish to. If we skip to the, the right hand side, um, we've got another seven boxes. So there's the options for the serial output data. It's very rare that you need to do anything with that, but if you are running an external logger for any reason, um, then you can adjust the sample rates for how often you're sampling GPS data or accelerations or temperatures and so on. I say it's got a sensible default configuration, it's very rare you need to touch that. Uh, similarly, we also have the output CAN data, and again, that's only really required for very advanced applications where you want to take the data from the Dash 2 Pro out of a CAN port and log it on a separate data logger. So I'll just uh, move on from that one. Logging is, uh, is the next. So this allows you to set the sample rates for how often the data is recorded on the internal memory on the Dash 2 Pro. So the Dash 2 Pro has lots of built-in memory. It's actually eight gigabytes is, is the standard memory. Um, you, you can reduce the sample rates on various channels, but again, it's not often it's necessary. Normally it's left as its default configuration, which is pretty sensible. Um, there's also some other interesting options in here. We can change the, the file naming convention of the unit which is, is 
normally fine to leave them as they are, but if you are part of a race series and you're collecting data from lots of different units, it may be useful to put a name in there rather than the, uh, just the date. There's also the automatic start and stop logging options. So, for example, we can automatically start um, based on speed or RPM, and that will save you having to manually start and stop logging using a button on, on the unit. Uh, the fourth one down, this is the alarms. Now these are highly configurable and, and normally very useful. So there's two different ways to set up the alarms. There's a, a, a very straightforward one, what we call our standard alarms, and there's also the advanced alarms. So the, the standard ones, well, there's one set up here, which is a, a very typical example. So alarm one is water temperature. That triggers an alarm when it goes above 100 degrees Celsius. In the case of an alarm, it's displayed across the bottom the shift lights flash and the backlight flashes as well, give you a clear indication. So that's a very nice straightforward alarm. Um, if you wish, there's a more comprehensive setup available under the advanced alarm setting. So if we just take a look at that. So in this case, I won't go through all the options, but just to give you some ideas. You can set up a name of the alarm and you can set up multiple conditions. So rather than just having an alarm when water temperature is above a certain threshold, you could set up something like uh, oil pressure when it's below a threshold and RPM is above a threshold at the same time. Or maybe having two different alarm thresholds, one for low temperature, one for high temperature. As well as that, you can set up how long the alarm is displayed for, what happens when the alarm is triggered, and the text which is displayed on the screen. So one possibly useful application here is we can actually control the outputs on the Dash 2 Pro. So for example, if there's a, a very serious warning, again oil pressure would be the obvious one, then it actually drives one of the outputs from the Dash 2 Pro for a very large indication in the vehicle, one, one that can't be missed. Okay, so that's the alarm section. Next we have the output drivers, which is more for advanced applications. But this allows you to set up the four, four driver outputs on the Dash 2 Pro. So these can be used for turning valves on and off, indicators on and off, um, based on different inputs. Uh, lap time is the next one, which is obviously a very common, uh, common requirement. So the, this allows you to set up what lap and sector timing statistics are shown and when and, and how long for as well. So I won't go through them all but just to give you some idea you can display predictive lap times, best lap times, um, the last lap times, deltas. Um, so again there's, there's a standard configuration which we set up which I think most users run with however if you wish to customise it all the options are there. There's also some more advanced options I'll, I'll not go into those but just allows you another uh, degree of flexibility. Finally on the output screen we've got the car computer functions. So this allows you to display things like the, the amount of time that the engine's been running for and uh, fuel level predictions, so the number of laps left on the current fuel um, and other options like that. Um, now if you look back at the the, the, the centre section of the screen. Um, these are all the options to do with how the information is displayed on the actual Dash 2, on the, on the main display area. So the, the first one is to do with brightness and contrast. So we have two different modes. We have day mode and night mode. Now there's an input on the back of the unit which is attached to the uh, headlights of the vehicle and the unit switches between two modes depending on whether headlights are turned on or turned off. The reason for that is the LED shift lights and the backlight to some extent, they're very, very bright. If, we had the, if the shift lights were set up so that they were correct brightness during the daytime, during nighttime it's a little bit dangerous because they're so bright they actually dazzle you while you're driving. So um, this enables us to set up different brightnesses depending on the day or night. Um, if you look at shift lights next, so uh, in, the, in the standard configuration we simply set the RPM of, that each LED comes on at. Um, 
there is a more advanced configuration. Um, you can change the shift light thresholds depending on a different parameter. So for example, you could have different shift lights depending on whether the engine was hot or cold. Uh, and also you can have different shift light styles. So in the standard one, we go from left to right and they come on and then they all flash. However, they can come on from the center going outwards and they can have different co color combinations as well. That's the shift lights. Just, uh, move on to the next screen. This one is the gear indicator, which is just shown on this part of the screen. So there's a couple of different modes the gear indicator can be used in. In a lot of applications, it's just calculated from the RPM and the speed. So it takes those two, you configure the unit with your gear ratios, it works out what gear you're in and it displays it. If you do have a sequential box or a box with a, a gearbox sensor in it, so we can actually measure a voltage, it's possible to set up the voltages for it. Or indeed you can take the gear information from CAN data or any other source. Uh, the next one is the RPM scale. So this is the RPM scale as it goes around. And again, we can set it up for a, a straightforward scale or we can switch between a couple of different scales depending on the temperature of the en engine. And we can also fix, there's a, um, there's a maximum uh, bar that comes up, so that drops back more slowly. So that's quite useful for seeing your shift points and we can set how, how long the maximum indicator is displayed for. This is the setup for the speed readout. Um, which is in the middle of the screen. So that can either come from the external wheel speed input or from GPS or for race applications quite often it's hidden altogether and you can use it as a lap, in, a lap counter instead. And finally, but probably the most important one, um, this, the setup for the LCD data areas that controls what parameters are displayed on the dashboard for each of the five screens. So we have one, two, three, four, five different screens and we can switch between those in normal operation using the up and down buttons on the dashboard. And for each of those screens we have three main areas. So for the default configuration for example we're displaying the fuel level, the oil pressure and the water temperature. The way those are displayed in terms of the number of decimal places, the filtering on them, the text which is displayed, um, that's all controlled from here. There's two um, advanced options towards the bottom of the screen. So we have variable source. Normally this is not used by um, in a regular installation, but it allows you to control where the data comes from. So for example, if you're getting water temperature from a sensor, an analog sensor, but you're also getting uh, water temperature from the ECU, it allows you to choose which of those data sources should be used as the display and for driving the alarms. You can also, also set up custom equations, so that combines data from t a couple of different sensors. So for example, if you want to know the increase in temperature of the air across the turbo, you might have two different air temperature sensors and you can set up an equation to take one away from the other. And the final one, that's the uh, variable reset group. So again, this is very much for advanced applications, but allows you to reset a variable to zero before you start. The most common one um, which that's used for is ride height. So when the car is flat and level, you can set it to zero, and then the, the values displayed on the unit are, is a deviation from that. So when you go, when the suspension is compressed or extended. Okay, I think that's all the main options um, covered. Hopefully that's given you some idea of the capabilities of the Dash 2 Pro. There are lots of advanced options in there, but hopefully you can see that the software is quite logically structured. So for most applications, it's relatively straightforward to use. For more advanced applications, it has the flexibility and the power to do whatever you require on your car. Okay, well I hope that was useful and thank you very much.